Welcome to the road to 1 million US dollars. Let's get right into the Bitcoin chart today because as you can see yesterday, we obviously had a massive move to the downside, but found some support in this exact pocket that I drew out for you guys. And like I talked about in yesterday's video, we reached oversold territories in the RSI momentum indicator on the one hour Bitcoin chart, because typically whenever the RSI reaches oversold territories, so first the RSI needs to reset to around this 50 level. And the way it does that is either by the price moving up or just consolidating sideways. And since my last video, that's exactly what ended up happening. So since we're now trading back to the upside, something to keep an eye on is this resistance level right above us at 68.5K all the way up to $70,000 because this can act as some short-term resistance to potentially send us back to the downside. However, in the case that we do end up trading lower, there's a level of support at 66,000 down to 65,500 US dollars. But in the case that we lose this level, then we will likely quickly head down to the 62 down to $60,000 level because this is a big level of support. And I do think it is likely that we see at least a little bit of a bounce from this level. Now taking a look at this triangle pattern that I've talked about over the past two weeks or so. First, we of course saw this fake out to the upside. And then again, yesterday we saw a fake out to the downside. And this is something that I specifically warned about in my previous videos, because there's this big level of support at 66K right below the triangle pattern. So that's why I said it's not crazy if we just wick down to this level to grab all of that liquidity and, our, and then start trading back inside of this range again. And as of right now that I'm recording this video, we are trading back inside the range. So all of this that happened yesterday was basically just nothing to panic about. So as long as we hold this trend line right here, which currently is sitting at about 67.4K, as long as we hold the trend line, then we should just continue to be trading inside of this range again. And ultimately this pattern will break out before April 19th, and it will either break to the upside or to the downside. Now, in the case that we break to the downside, the bearish price target that would be confirmed is about 58.4K. However, in the case that we do just break out to the upside from this triangle pattern, then the price target would be about 78.5K. And I just wanted to mention this comment that I saw on yesterday's video, because I think it's instructive that I explain a little bit about that. So this person said, we basically don't know anything because I said that it could go to 58K or 78K. But that's basically how, how like technical analysis and how these patterns work, right? Like first you need to see either a confirmed breakout to the upside or to the downside before you can have that price target, right? Like I can't just sit here and say, yeah, no, it's going to go up. <laughs> that's how technical analysis works. So you wait for a confirmed breakout to the upside or to the downside. And based off of that, then you have a rough idea of what you can expect in the market in the relatively short term. So of course, if someone's just saying, yeah, it can go up or down, that's not valuable. However, I'm just trying to show you guys the patterns that I see in the charts, and that should tell you something about what I'm expecting in the short term. But obviously I cannot give you financial advice because first of all, I'm not a qualified financial advisor. And secondly, I don't want that responsibility. So that's why I'm only telling you guys what I see in the charts and you can do with that information what you like. Now taking a look at the one week Bitcoin liquidation heat map, you can see that there's about a billion dollars worth of liquidity right here to the upside. And as you know, if you watch my videos regularly, typically the Bitcoin price gets attracted to where there's most liquidity on this chart. And even zooming out on the one month Bitcoin liquidation heat map, you can see about $2.3 billion at about $73,000 for the Bitcoin price. So taking a look at these pockets of liquidity on the triangle pattern chart, you can see that the liquidity is actually above the breakout level from the triangle. So it's definitely a possibility that we end up grabbing this liquidity, even if we eventually do move to the downside. So that's just something to keep in mind. And the reason I'm not saying like, as soon as we get this breakout, we're guaranteed to blast to the upside here is because we are five days away, about six days away from the Bitcoin having. So this will obviously create a lot of volatility in the market. 
Now, lastly, taking a look at the Bitcoin ETF flow table. Yesterday was the last day of trading for this week, and we saw a net outflow of about $55 million, 166 million being sold by the Grayscale Bitcoin ETF, and about $111 million being bought by the BlackRock ETF. And kind of strangely here, we're seeing all zeros across the board for all these other ETFs. So I don't know exactly what's going on. I, th I think after this video, I'm going to look into that. And if I find anything interesting, I'll let you know. But either way, the story remains the same as I have been saying in every single video. I think as long as we're trading inside of this triangle pattern, there will be low volume and low volatility in these Bitcoin ETF products. But as soon as we break out either to the upside or to the downside, I think a lot of volatility will come back into these ETF products and we will start to see craziness unfold. Now, taking a look at Ethereum on the weekly time frame, you can see that right here we lost the 786 Fibonacci level. And then, in fact, this week so far, which ends in about a day, we have also lost the 618 Fibonacci level. So we have about a day and nine hours as of the time of recording this video to reach back above about $330. Because in the case that we lose this level, this actually turns into some pretty tough resistance in the short term. And we might have to start looking down at this 2870 level. So that is just something to keep in mind if you're trading Ethereum right now. Taking a look at Ethereum in the short term for our time frame, though, obviously we got this massive move to the downside here and then found some support exactly in the level of support that I drew out for you guys in my recent videos. And right now we're seeing a little bit of a move back to the upside, which was to be expected because the RSI momentum indicator reached oversold territories. So right now the RSI just needs to reset a little bit before we can see the next move. So in the short term, maybe day or two, what we can expect is simply for the price to either slowly be creeping back up or simply for the price to just consolidate while this RSI momentum indicator is resetting back to the upside. And after that, I think the next big move will be either to the upside or to the downside, depending on what Bitcoin actually does in the short term. Because in my opinion, it looks like Ethereum follows the Bitcoin price pretty closely, where if Bitcoin is bullish, then so is Ethereum. And if Bitcoin is bearish, then so is Ethereum. Now, in terms of resistance, we obviously have this 3330 level. This is the Fibonacci level. But in the case that we break above it, the next level of resistance is from about 3450 all the way up to 3550. Lastly, for Ethereum, what you need to look out for is this support level right here from 3250 down to 3150, because in the case that we lose this, well, then the next level of support is already from 3000 all the way to 2850. So this would be a pretty significant move to the downside for Ethereum in the case that we lose this level of support. But yeah, in the short term for Solana, we see a pretty similar story as Ethereum because we reached oversold territories on the RSI momentum indicator, meaning that the RSI needs some time to reset. And the way it does that is either by the price moving up quickly or the price just consolidating sideways, in which case the RSI will reach the 50 level. So that's my expectation in the short term. In terms of resistance, there's a level of resistance right here at about $162. And then above that, there's another level of resistance at about 166 up to $171. And in the case that we do just trade sideways, making the RSI reset and then end up trading back to the downside again, well, the support level that you need to watch is right here from about 150 down to $140. And then below that, there's another big level of support from about 130 down to $120. This has been today's update video. If you want to join my free crypto discord group, then you can do it with the first link in the description of this video. Thank you for watching once again, and I will see you tomorrow in the next one.